to be here and uh, to hear talks uh, from, uh, on, on diagnostics. Uh, I must say we are big users of outcome of research on diagnostics, so um, I'm always very thrilled to listen to the talks that will take place this afternoon. Um, the first speaker is, uh, I, don't, I don't think I need to introduce her, Françoise Polyakov, so from ANSES, and uh, she, she will tell us about uh, what the Ponte project has done for diagnostics. So Françoise, floor is yours. Thank you, Francoise. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. I will have the pleasure to present you the main outcomes of the work package for using the project Ponte uh, about the research on diagnostic of Xylella fastidiosa, which is coming to the end by these days. So, on the the work package for, for this uh, project had the, the objective of uh, implemented and validated diagnostic. What is, uh, sorry. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but, um, yes. Uh, the implementation and validation of diagnostic uh, protocol for early and rapid detection of uh, target pathogen in host plant and vector. That means for Xylella fastidiosa, the objective was to provide a very reliable and efficient uh, method able to, um, for early detection of the pathogen in order to um, um, put um, on the on the place the the good measure to prevent the spread of the pathogen. So uh, different partners participated uh, to this project in order uh, to develop first of all novel and high throughput diagnostic procedure to detect Zilela in plants and vectors such as a new antisera proposed by different companies, method based on PRIDs and CODs, automatized protocol for DNA extraction, rapid biomolecular uh, test proposed by different companies, and method of detection of Zilela in uh, vectors such as Philanus spumarius. There was also an objective of development of st strain species, specific assays for a rapid screening test for stain strain typing, and finally uh, to propose an official method after uh, intra and interlaboratory validation process. The serological uh, tests are generally uh, of low cost and easy to use, and that's why they have been evaluated within these projects in order to um, have easy preparation of sample direct in the field based on plant prints and cords membrane in order to overcome the preparation of SAP DNA extraction and purification of total nucleate acids. The partner CNR, Uniba, Agritest and Laura um, work on uh, direct, tissue immune, direct tissue blood immunoassay, FTR card followed by HELISA, and lateral flow test strip based on antibodies against uh, such species POCA, for example. There was improvement also of production of new antibodies for ELISA as well for immunofluorescence, such the recombinant protein MOP from Agritest or monoclonal from IVIA, and uh, subspecies, specific subspecies antibody uh, proposed by USR from uh, Costa Rica and ANSES. Concerning the development uh, of uh, DNA extraction and their optimization and validation, different DNA extraction kits to be used without automize, with sorry, automatized equipment or platform at a large scale showed good performance for highly reliable diagnostic depending of the matrices because we 
have observed that uh, depending on the matrices, we can have different um, uh, level of uh, inhibitors. But we uh, selected as the golden reference the CTAB home med DNA extraction, which has been recommended now for a lot of complex matrices, rich in inhibitors. The kit from QuickPick uh, DNA extraction uh, from BioNobile was quite efficient on ornamentals, vine, and citrus. DNA's American food kit from Kiagen was uh, effective on olive trees and other host. And um, the last um, work uh, made with uh, a new kit is the about the Promega kit, uh, Maxwell uh, RSA Pure Food GMO plus authentication kit um, that can be used on a um, specific uh, platform Maxwell, but also with other automatized uh, system. Uh, that is quite promising at the moment. And uh, we will get some uh, information about that uh, later. In the preparation of sample uh, direct in the field for quick result overcoming the preparation of SAP and DNA extraction, uh, we, what man cards have been tested followed by real time PCR or LAMP or RPA uh, method and uh, direct nucleotide acid hybridization on nitrocellulose strip, such lateral flow as well uh, as been proposed by Love. For insect uh, vectors uh, DNA extraction, there are two methods which has been selected and showed a good result is the CTAB homemade DNA extraction and the quick pick uh, plant DNA kit for Bionobile. Concerning the, sorry, and uh, the very last um, outcome in uh, term of DNA extraction was the introduction in um, the preparation step, the sonication that uh, permit uh, for, uh, to release the bacteria from um, biofilm for difficult matrices like uh, Olea, Kerkus, and that uh, has been shown to improve the sensitivity of the different method. Concerning the biomolecular method, through intra-laboratory test and inter-laboratory test, uh, published PCR, different published PCR has been evaluated and we can say uh, after the end of the Ponte project that the real-time PCR or per et al from 2010 protocol is still now the golden reference, we can say, that show the best performances in particular in sensitivity and accuracy, whatever the matrices are used. Compared to the other um, real-time PCR, such Francis et al. or Lee et al. And um, you have some uh, graphic here uh, that has been um, presenting um, uh, the test of the different uh, PCR on um, sample made by uh, Evia that show that um, and confirm that PCR give always the, the, the best result. And there is also a very um, dependent uh, result um, depending of uh, the, the variety, for example, on olive trees or on almond trees. On Philanus pumarius, uh, we had PCR Harper alone give reliable <laughs> results as well as uh, with association with primer of yours for internal uh, control. Portable devices that can be used in the field, direct in the field, without moving the sample from infecting zone to uh, even the uh, other zone is quite um, an option, like a PCR lamp from uh, Anne Biotech and uh, Amplify RP kit um, of on recombinant uh, polymerase amplification technique from Agdia which show uh, best uh, sensitivity using uh, the um, detection chamber. And uh, finally, the lateral flow could be an option also 
but um, it has been uh, observed that generally the sensitivity is uh, less um, uh, than for uh, real-time PCR. This method has been uh, evaluated on um, contaminated, um, naturally contaminated sample. In Italy, on uh, 90 olive sample, assessed uh, in, um, first of all by um, ELISA and DNZ American Food Kit with real-time ARPER. And um, this result uh, show that the in-print techniques show lower sensitivity and accuracy compared the to the quick ready uh, PCR, LAMP, or RPA. The same kind of uh, experiment has been uh, carried out in uh, Spain on almond trees collected in the field that have been assessed, first of all, with the uh, um, protocol um, ARPER. And um, this time, it has been shown that there is a lower sensitivity and accuracy associated with serological test and RPA compared to real-time PCR, whatever real-time Francis or ARPER, which gave the 100% of uh, sensitivity. This method has been um, going through a process of inter-laboratory uh, validation with the organization of, first of all, um, molecular detection uh, uh, for Xylella um, for real-time assay inter-laboratory test within, with 14 laboratories involved. Uh, different method has been uh, implemented uh, with two uh, extraction methods, the um, CTAB extraction and the uh, uh, Zenis American uh, food kit Kiagen, uh, followed by the four uh, different real-time PCR. The result show that the, the golden uh, reference state the ARPER method with 100% of uh, uh, criter uh, cri performance criteria for accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, repeatability, and reproducibility. Uh, generally, uh, this uh, performance criteria range from 92 to 100 percent uh, with the other um, real-time PCR. And uh, the real-time PCR Lee standard and uh, with uh, MGB probe produce some false positive result, and the use of MGB probe didn't improve uh, the performance parameter of the real-time PCR in this case. So the golden reference, the, the real-time hyper PCR. In terms of uh, detection of on um, vectors, the test performance study organized by ANSES with the um, participation of 20 laboratories part, uh, was uh, implemented to evaluate uh, three different methods of DNA extraction, QuickPeak, CTAB, and Yasin um, system DNA extraction for naturally in insect only with a five amplification uh, method. So the results show that equivalent and reliable results for combination of DNA extraction, quick peak or CTAB with all the real-time PCR give are uh, reliable, um, but uh, there is some combination with are less uh, reliable such uh, quick peak and Francis et al. Uh, PCR. In terms of Rapid screening test for train typing, such as RM. Uh, work has been implemented at CNR and Mediba to propose um, a work in different steps. First of all, different uh, primer step has been um, evaluated on strain, directly on strain. Uh, primer from uh, the Francis et al. HL5 and HL6 primer from the HL uh, protein, and two other sets proposed by the partner for uh, based on GRB gene and new gene. 
those are results so that we can um, cluster and differentiate easily some uh, subspecies on sample uh, of uh, strain. And um, this method has been uh, applied on um, sample um, from coming from fields. And uh, there was a, go a good uh, result uh, to um, as assign the sample to a subspecies of Pauka with the primer HL and the primer neural. And it is useful to assign genotype to a subspecies cl cluster for pre-screening infected sample to be further analyzed if necessity, necessity uh, by MLST system. Um, another method was uh, evaluated is the multiplex mini sequencing uh, evaluated by the um, partner from Spain based on uh, mini sequencing obtained independently by each, by different primer using DNA from type strain uh, in a multi -proch, uh, multiplex approach and uh, this result uh, were able to distinguish um, the different uh, subspecies and particularly POCA on sample. And we can see uh, also on vectors that uh, uh, the partner could be able to uh, identify subspecies POCA directly in uh, vectors and on plants host, uh, as well. So all this information, all this work about the method uh, has been gathered uh, within the official protocol proposed uh, in collaboration with uh, EPO. It is the PM724 uh, in its fourth uh, reviewing uh, that uh, gather all the last and recent outcomes about the, the work on the method. So. I can say uh, I thank you the Ponte Grant project and all the partners um, with uh, them we have a very uh, nice work. But we know that there is still other improvement on the method and uh, there are so other projects like X Factor which is working on. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Françoise. I have another one which is nothing is written in marble, and this also applies to the diagnostic protocol, which is nearly revised every year. I think it's, it's the hit number in terms of revision, or no doubt on it. Are there any questions for Françoise about this review of all the work that has been done over four years? Uh, and as she said, um, the result have been included in the diagnostic protocol. So all is available. <laughs> so any question or you want to keep your question for the end when all the speakers are on the scene? It's a nice mix of things that are already implemented and also result that we could consider for further revision of the protocol. So it's a good mix of speakers this afternoon. Okay, thank you, Francoise. Oh, there is a question, sorry. I, I just wanted to know, uh, could, could LAMP technique replace real-time PCR? <laughs> That's for you. Yeah, I, it could replace in some cases. It depends on the purpose uh, of the use of these techniques. For example, uh, in a place where we know Xilela is present at a uh, high level, could be interesting to use the lamp as a screening test because it's more sensitive than ELISA, for example. And uh, on vectors, um, we have observed that lamp uh, give uh, equivalent result to real PCR after DNA extraction. But um, I think um, we must consider the different cases and purposes. Thank you very much, Francois. So now um, 
I'm calling on uh, the stage uh, Inora Dupin. So she will tell us about a new uh, tetraplex uh, real-time PCR for the subspecies. And we've heard already this morning how identification of subspecies is important. So thank you, Francoise. Uh, So, hello everybody. Um, so today I'm here to introduce you a new detection tool naming new tetraplex QPACR assays for the simultaneous detection and identification of Zilella fastidiosa subspecies in planta. Thank you. <laughs> so hi, how you, you all know Xylella fastidiosa is a plant-associated bacteria Limited is uh, in the xylem vessels, which is transmitted by insect vectors. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> bon. Merci. Uh, which is transmitted by insect vectors. And we actually have a re really large host range of plant species uh, of bacteria. And most of them are of major social economic impact like olive tree, almond tree, citrus, or graving. For all of these reasons, Xylella fastidiosa was put in the A2 list of the hippo, and it's a bacteria of declaration and eradic eradication mandatory. But to detect something, you first need to know your enemy. So in Xylella fastidiosa, we have described five subspecies, which are the subspecies Fastidiosa, Morus, Sandi, Multiplex, and Poca. And since a little bit of time, it was proposed to group the subspecies Fastidiosa, Morris, and Sandi in, the subs in one subspecies, naming Fastidiosa sensulato. You may have heard uh, of another one subspecies, subspecies Tashke. I'm not gonna talk anymore of this species in Malk talk because we actually don't have an isolated strain or genomic data. So now let's look at the world distribution of Zalela. On this map, each dot represents an outbreak. And you can see the subspecies colored here. And you can see that subspecies distribution is different around the world. You're gonna see subspecies fastidiosa in the north of the house, subspecies multiplex in Europe and South Africa, subspecies Morris in South America, Pauka in Europe, Central and South America, and Sandy a little bit everywhere. Now let's go back to France. In France, to set up plant management, we need two things. We need first to detect the bacteria, which is usually done using the QPCR pair that Francoise was talking about and is a gold method of detection. And then we need to identify the subspecies. It should usually do using an MLST scheme of seven housekeeping genes. So basically you need to amplify the gene, sequence them, compare the sequence to a database. From this database you can have the sequence type and from the sequence type you can deduce the subspecies. Hold this scheme gonna take you at least five days and it's gonna cost you 42 euros by sample. Since July 20, 218, only two genes are sufficient, but it still be 12 euros by sample and it's still so time consuming and costly. So 
this is a, why I developed this multiplex QPCR to have a new tool to simultaneously detect the species and identify the subspecies in planta. So to set up this tool, we needed some different st steps. First, um, we look for specific sequences in 47 genomes we have in our team, and we use SCIF tools that Marianne has introduced to you a little bit earlier. So using that, we were able to detect specific sequences for the species Zilella fastidiosa, the species fast Zilella fastidiosa, the species Morris fastidiosa, multiplex, and POCA and also Xylella fastidiosa, the species fastidiosa sensulato. If you heard what I was saying before, you're gonna ask me why don't you have primers and probes for the subspecies Sandy? The reason is easy. We had only one genome sequence for this subspecies, so we thought it wasn't enough to design something specific. Then we tested in silico how primers and probes on all the genome available in our team, and then on more than 154,000 genomes that was available in the NCBI database. And they were specific. Then we evaluated the performance criteria in simplex qPCR assay on extracted DNA and bacterial suspension. We first look at the detection threshold and we compare it to the qPCR harbors. And what you can see is that in simplex qPCR, how new primers have the same, are the same detection threshold of the qPCR harbors, or are a little bit better. We also look at the inclusivity. The inclusivity is the ability of primers and probes to amplify what they were designed for. And on the strain we tested, we had an inclusivity on 100%. We then look at exclusivity. It means uh, the non-ability non of primers and probes to not amplify what they were not designed for. So we look at xylella fastidiosa strain because we don't want the primers um, designed for the subspecies multiplex to, for example, amplify the subspecies POCA. And we also choose 30 non-target strains, and this strain was chosen because uh, we could find this bacteria in the same samples as like Zilella fastidiosa. And again, we had an exclusivity of 100%. Then we multiplex the primer. We did three multiplexing. So the first one is specific of the subspecies you can find in Euro European, Central, South American. The second one is specific of the subspecies you can find in North America. And the last one, by the use of the primer fastidiosa sensulato, can amplify the whole diversity, diversity of Zilella fastidiosa. And again, we look at detection threshold. And why, what you can see on this table is that how multiplex qPCR add on genomic DNA the same detection threshold that the, than the qPCR helper. And now I'm going to focus on the last multiplexing that can amplify the whole diversity of Zilela. So because the whole purpose of this qPCR is to be used in pl on plant, we did this experiment. So we sample plants, we spike them with a non-concentration of bacteria, extract the DNA, and in parallel we did two experiments. We first use the qPCR harper to try to detect the bacteria, and in second time we use the, the multiplex qPCR to detect the bacteria and identify the subspecies. We did that on 13 different matrices that we spike with the subspecies uh, that were found in the environment, environment. Plus, we spike um, oleander, olive tree, polygala, and almond tree with two to three different strains from different subspecies because one day we may have co-infection or mixed infection. And these are the results. So what you need to focus on these graphs is that each graph represents different plant matrices spiked with one subspecies, 
the first green bar with, uh, will always be the detection threshold of the primers and probes that detect the species, then the subspecies, and in purple, you're always going to have the detection threshold of the qPCR helper. So first, what you need to see is that no matter the strain or the matrices that we tested, we were able to detect and identify the subspecies that we spike. And each time you can see a mark, we were able to identify the subspecies with the same detection threshold than the qPCR harper. But remember, the qPCR harper only detects the species. So we have the same for subspecies morus and multiplex. And here again, for the majority of the matrices, we were able to identify the subspecies at levels similar to Harper's qPCR. We also try to identify different subspecies, two to three in same matrices, and we were able to identify in oleander, olea, almond tree, and polygala, two to three different species but the detection threshold a, li a little bit higher. And then, because it's the whole purpose of this qPCR, we try to detect the LLA and identify subspecies in real infected sample. So we choose 16 different samples. We choose them because we knew using the qPCR harper th that there was, they were infected by the LLA fastidiosa but we couldn't identify the subspecies using the MLST scheme. And each time you can see a red cross, we were able to detect the bacteria and identify the subspecies. And for two samples, we were not able to detect the bacteria using the qPCR because the primer is a little bit less sensitive, but we still were able to identify the subspecies. Now, if I, to, if I talk in city for people that know qPCR, when we had a high city using qPCR upper until 34, we were able to identify the subspecies that was present in the sample. So now, how, what I want you to remember of how that I just say, is today we develop six sets of primers and probes that are species and subspecies specific. They are highly specific because we were not able to identify cross amplification with another subspecies, another species, or another genera. The qPCR is usable in tetraplex and allow detection of a unique or multiple subspecies infection. On pure culture, detection threshold using this multiplex qPCR is as good as the Harper qPCR. And in plant matrices, the detection threshold is equal or a little bit higher than the qPCR Harper's, but is still really interested because it provides a subspecies identification at levels where the MLST, MLST skin does the work. Also, it's cheaper and faster because it's only one reaction of PCR. So we saw that this multiplex PCR could be a good candidate for consideration for the next update of official method. And if you want to know more about the, this multiplex PCR, I invite you to read the paper we wrote. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Enoha. I, I must say it was a very clear pr presentation. Uh, exactly what we like to hear in EPO panel with everything evaluated, the analytical sensitivity, the exclusivity, the inclusivity. It's a good candidate for the next revision. <laughs> Even if for me next revision will mean more work, but <laughs> I like it. So any question for Enoha? It was very clear, so I <laughs> cannot say more that it was really presenting all the evidence we need uh, in a, in a, for an inclusion of a test. So uh, congratulations to the team. You did the work. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you.
If I can add just one thing. I am also working on digital PCR for xylella detection. So if you want to hear more about digital PCR, I invite you to come to Poster 52. Thank you. In fact, uh, that's also something I wanted to say. You steal it from me. Um, they, they are really good posters that are really complementary to the session we have this afternoon. And I can only recommend that you go and look at all the different posters on detection and, and diagnostic. They are really different uh, um, presentation there that really very complementary to that session. I'm calling on stage um, Elvesio. So please, and, and you're going to tell us about um, tissue print, yeah. so which is also included in our <laughs> protocol. No. <laughs> okay, good afternoon. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, okay, um, my idea is, um, what is it? Okay, uh, my idea is um, born when I saw in the field that the growers are not to recognize the symptoms associated with xylella correctly. So I asking for, for the growers, oh, could send me the samples, I can do the analysis in the lab, I can do the result. But um, they send me the samples, but the samples when I have in my hands, while in bad condition to do an, uh, DNA extractions and all the stuff necessary. So I think, oh, I must ha ha uh, have or provide them when diagnostic system can be easy for the growers and easy for me in the lab, okay? So I, I figured out, well, I could work in with one simple strategy to do half and a half, okay? The grover do the sample, and I do the analysis in the lab. Uh, just for uh, figure out to you about the situation, uh, the, when you, uh, in Brazil, the, there is two, two different places that grow olive. One is the mountain chain, when the, the works that you are, uh, I do the sample for population analysis, it's far from the lab, okay? So even time that you, the, the growers send me the samples by mail, the, the samples uh, were in bad condition for the analysis. Okay, just for figure out about this situation. Uh, how does it work? Okay, uh, so uh, in, a, in addition, uh, you are in a, I can say, the, the, the same slide that I show you is in, the, in Mallorca, it's almost the same that you are showing here now. You are almost uh, learn about how to grow olive trees in the field. Okay? Uh, you are in the tropical, so, uh, and you are just, I, I, as I told you, you are the, the most, uh, uh, all the uh, trees that you have in the, in the fields is 20 years old, no more than this one. So the growers and now are learning about how to conduce the plants in the field, the first point. The second point that as the, the, the need, the, we are in tropical and so to, to have the flowering and fruiting in the, in the olive plants, you must go in high altitude to have low temperature. And you go to the high altitude, you have oops, that, that, these conditions of the rain, rainfall distributions. You almost one, uh, uh, 1,600 millimeters by year. It's high humid conditions that you have in those situations. And consequence of this one, uh, uh, that you have other disease be, uh, biotic and abiotic stress that is confusing the growers how to identify the correct symptoms associated with xylella infections. That's, uh, I, I have been to, the, 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 I concluded that the growers have been some confusion about this identification of symptoms. Uh, for example, it's uh, for the, the real symptoms associated with xylella, it's easy to, to conclude when you have the leaves in the plant. But later on, on the system, on the symptoms, the, 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 the leaves drop. And they, they, they start to do a confusion about the correct identification of the symptoms associated with xylella infections. Uh, um, this here. So, for example, those kind of symptoms here uh, could be 
say that you associate or not with Dalala. It's quite difficult. Even for us that you go to the, uh, you went, I, I went and I, and I go to the field uh, at least uh, once time uh, at two months, okay? And I, uh, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm uh, like I say, I can't identify the plants by Zalella fastidious infection, but the growers are still uh, doing confusion about this kind of identification. So the objective is uh, that, that it, I, and I'm uh, uh, showing here, it's provide the growers to d discern about it. the symptoms that are seen in the field are related, are related or not with the Zylella fastidiosa infections, right? mainly in suspicious uh, plants. So uh, you know that you have different uh, strategy to do diagnosis of Plant, uh, plant, plant pathogen diagnosis. So uh, from this kind of difference of uh, uh, strategies that you can use, in, you, are, you are seeing the previous uh, uh, toolings that it, most of the, 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 the diagnosis is doing by key PCR. But you are doing a PCR in our, in our lab also, but it's, uh, there is some advantages uh, of the key PCR, but uh, they are expensive, okay, the first time, and also you have a good DNA conditions to have a good, uh, um, good uh, uh, confiable, confiable results. So we're thinking about one immunologic strategy uh, that is more cheap, cheap one, and also uh, you can do out of samples in the, uh, in the, the same time. But Come on. Okay, uh, to do, uh, of course, you must have an uh, antibody. That you did one, uh, not we, but we, we, we the, the, the antibody that it, that it was developed was polyclonal antibody that was in the rabbits. Okay. But we, for a, a private company, you just uh, provide for the company the different sequence type STs that you have in the lab. They are a mix of the bacteria and the company did the, the antibody against this different sequence uh, ST from PAUCA that you have in Brazil, okay? And the antibody showed a good reactive between when you can see the, the different, the, the OD and the different dilution of the antibody, and there are good react reactivity against the antigens. So the another uh, point is how to have the samples in good conditions for do the analysis. So I think, well, you must could using the tissue print, okay, using uh, membrane, nitrocellulose membrane. I provide the membrane for the growers, and the growers do the tissue print and send me by mail, okay? But first, I must to test the, if this is correct or not with this idea. Uh, we adapted one, the simple protocol work full for tissue print analysis. It's a regular system to do t tissue print, okay? Uh, using in the, in, the, in the end the uh, 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 color visualization by the, 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 the detections between the positive and negative samples uh, by the, uh, what you say, the, the reactivity against the NC, uh, BC, AP, and HB. Uh, what can you have the purple and the, and the, and the um, uh, black colors for the positive samples and the the, the no reactivity with the blank cells, or I can say yellow, light yellow for the negative samples. So, and you can see here, the first membrane that you did, here the, the negative control that you have here from A1 to A6, and from here you mix the samples, okay? And from the uh, B4 to B9, uh, B the negative samples, and who are in here, and, uh, and, uh, and oh, oops, it's okay. Oh. Uh, and that's one. Uh, the positive samples you can do. Uh, you can see the good reactions between the positive with the antibody. Okay, here you got the positive control and negative control. A lot of negative control, and the background is easy to be uh, uh, to be conclude about if the sample was positive or negative. Okay, here the the the, the negative samples. 
Okay? And now you just validate this, uh, the methodology using, using key PCR, okay, traditional PCR, key PCR, and also uh, the tissue print protocol. You take the samples from the field and the same field and compare with the results about the conventional key PCR and tissue print PCR. You have a good correlations between key PCR and tissue print, but a bad correlation between conventional PCR and tissue print, of course, from quantitative PCR. With uh, uh, the correlations was between uh, tissue print and key PCR was as good, but for some samples, they are giving different response. Okay? For example, here, uh, for you have a negative key PCR, but a positive reactions against the, uh, uh, the antibody. Okay? Well, you can see here. Okay? Here, for example, in this sample here, uh, 469, you have the good reactions for the, for the antibody, the tissue print, but it was, it was negative for key PCR. Okay? But on their hands, you have positive key PCR, but negative tissue print. It's normal conditions. Okay? Just as a, uh, uh, showing some negative rea uh, reactions to antibody, uh, but positive for key PCR. Okay. It's, of course, the, 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 the key PCR works better than the tissue print, but now our, but now our idea is not to have you on a, it's heavy on a, on, a, on, a, on a simple way to detect the bacteria and provide the grovers on a way to send them with the sample easily and in good conditions for the analysis. So uh, you start validated, validating our process or in our methodology. You take sample from the field. For example, here, you, 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 the, you, it's a, a represent, representative uh, of, the, of, the, of the, the, the plants that you take the samples. Here you have the positives, oh, my gosh. You have the positives uh, branch, and here close the positive branch, the negative uh, asymptomatic branch, okay? And here one asymptomatic also. You take samples from the different conditions. You can see here A1, 2, B6, A1, 2, B6 from the uh, branch far from, oh, uh, distant from the positive branch, all the samples are negative, are negative, but the samples from the, from the symptomatic branch and closer, and the branch closer to the symptomatic one here, they are positive also, okay, in strong positive samples, okay. And here the, con the negative control and the positive control. Okay, they are good, good react uh, uh, reactions, okay, with the positive and the, and the symptomatic and asymptomatic branch, but closer to the symptomatic one. It's a natural, con it's a privilege, uh, uh, you can conclude that the bacteria was not spread over the plant, and that's when the, the symptom was in the beginning. Okay, just uh, um, stay, stay infected the, 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 the branch closer to the symptomatic one. In another way, you take samples from the, the, the symptomatic branch and the asymptomatic branch, but closer to the symptomatic one, and also sample from the roots, okay? You can see here also positive reactions and the A1 to, to six, 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 five, is the most one, A1 to six, uh, six, uh, six, uh, six, 60, all the same are positive, the branch is closer the, 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 the symptomatic one, and also the, 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 the samples from the symptomatic branch are positive compared with the positive control and negative control. It's a good, good uh, uh, reactions against the, against, the, against the bacteria. Okay, oops, sorry. And, and also from the roots, okay, do you have a good reaction against the bacteria, okay, the antibody. Um, so you are staying comfortable to spread this strategy for the growers. And with, uh, at uh, each visit you go to the field, you provide for the growers the membrane cellulose, which was already delimitated for the, the squares, okay? And tissue, 
the the farmers is it's a uh, it's a uh, farmers work you can see here yeah that's working for the, the owner yeah in, in teaching the, the this this guy about how to, how to print the cards and how to the, take the notes for have a trustability tractability of the results that you have in the in the lab okay and the uh, oriented this the this guy here to send the samples by by mail yeah? and you do the test in the lab okay here just as uh, as, as implying this ex ex example you have here the open the origin of the plant the 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 the, 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 the notes that the 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 the, the, the grower did about the, the 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 sample and here the results that you have from the the the, the the in the lab and send back for the growers the the, the results they had so so a, a simple way that you found to give some orientation for the growers about if they have infections the symptoms that are seen in the field or in the plant was related or not with the xylella fastidiosa this is not absolutely it's not good for the, the growers about this strategy Okay, so in conclusion that you have, it's a simple protocol that works fine for the growers and it's, 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 uh, it's for us all in the lab, because it's simple. In the card, you can do a lot of samples in the low, it's low expensive. Okay, okay. finally, thanks for your attention. And so I'm grateful for she's uh, ex actors and by uh, Sao Paulo State Research Foundation for the, the, the grants that you using a part with the our project is not objective in the project, but uh, I I we have an uh, impressions that you that the governors did not recognize the, the symptoms correctly and provide them for this simple strategy that can help them for the identification of the bacteria. Okay, and also. Uh, Important people are behind these results. These my students that work in this parallel project. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Elvisio, for taking us from the lab to the field to yeah. the orchards. <laughs> to stay. Um, are there any questions for Elvisio? Yes, okay. there's one from Joseph. Oh, where is it? Joseph Pages, ENA, European Nursery Stock Association. Is this uh, technique uh, low cost? It's low cost. Or is it yeah. cheap? Or we, have, we have heard in previous presentations the, the price. I do. I have the, the, the only price that you have this one. It's uh, paid for the company to do antibody, and you have an, a, a liter of antibody in the lab, and can use in this. And the card is no, no, no. It's the nitro, uh, nitro cell, uh, cellulose membrane. You can buy one liters, and it's not. It's not expensive. It's no. Yeah. It sounds great. No, sorry. It sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, just any idea about you, you you're going to say that I'm, I'm completely deformed by working for Apple. Any idea for the anal analytical sensitivity? So, what's your level of detection? No, I didn't do it. Okay. But uh, I, I have a good correlations between the key PCR and tissue print, but the conventional PCR was bad than the tissue print in the terms of the identification of the bacteria in the plant. Okay, so I think between the key, the key PCR and traditional, is better than traditional PCR, yes. Okay. But I, when I'm talking about it, when antibody that is recognized, I, I suppose that I, it's a polyclonal antibody, but uh, it's, it's working fine for Palka. I don't know, I didn't test for the other one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And we're calling our last speaker of this uh, detection session, so Juliana Locosole.
and she will tell us more about the sampling in particular. Uh, good evening. Um, this work uh, was uh, uh, carried out uh, in the framework of uh, XF project and involved uh, different uh, partners and uh, institution. And um, why it is important, uh, why is it important to detect Salella fastidiosa uh, in large lots of plants for planting and nursery stock? Uh, I have a problem. I, I didn't see. Oh, works. Okay, but uh, I didn't see. Okay. Ah, you don't uh, see yes, but uh, okay, it is okay. The um, it is important because, as um, in the session one was uh, mentioned, the most relevant pathway uh, for introduction of Xerella fastidiosa is the importation plants for planting and uh, of insects originating uh, where, uh, from the areas where the bacterium uh, is present. Uh, plants for planting generally are considered a high risk of pest introduction because the pest can survive and multiply on living host. And once at their destination, uh, the plants uh, will plant it and the, um, uh, the pest can uh, multiply and can be transferred to a suitable host in appropriate condition if plants are grown outdoors. Um, also, um, uh, this, uh, uh, this pathway of introduction of Xerella fastidiosa uh, is supported by the recently uh, interception of the bacterium in Europe, on, uh, especially on uh, coffee plants. Um, um, uh, the bacterium is uh, um, regulated by the phytonicide measure. Uh, the EU has introduced strict regulations to, far, uh, to prevent further introduction and spread in the rest of Union territory. Um, in particular, um, uh, uh, over than 300 plant species uh, and are under strict regulations. Uh, for these uh, uh, plant species, inspections uh, of import uh, at plant consignments are mandatory at production places and uh, uh, inspection are mandatory for movement inside and outside the marketed areas of these plant species. Uh, especially uh, plants for planting of uh, uh, coffee, lavander, uh, oleander, olive, polygala myrtifolia and um, uh, almond uh, shall be moved, uh, introduced in the EU uh, country, in the territory of EU, uh, EU territory, if grown in a site subjected to annual official inspection and sampling, take into account the technical guidelines for the survey of Xerella fastidiosa uh, reported by Commission and uh, the ISPM 31 to confirm the absence of the spe specified organism using a sample scheme able to identify with 99% uh, reliability the level of the presence of infecting plants of 5%. Also, the specified organism uh, shall be screened by one test and uh, as a polygala myrtifolia is considered a high susceptible host for these plant, uh, uh, plants of polygala uh, myrtifolia prior to its first movement out of its production site shall be subjected to official visual inspection and sampling. Uh, also, uh, to be moved, the specified plants from the demarcated area uh, shall um, to be um, uh, inspected using a simple scheme able to identify with 99% reliability a level of presence of infected plants of 1% uh, based on ISP 131. 
What means uh, if we consider the table one reported in the ISPM 31, if uh, uh, the number of units in lot is consist consisted of uh, two, um, uh, 200,000 uh, plant, uh, the sample size to be inspected and tested is 90 plants uh, with 5% level of detection and uh, more than 400 plants um, uh, with 1% of level of detection. Uh, it means that uh, it is necessary to uh, process a large uh, material, plant material. Uh, how to process, how we can process uh, uh, this large amount of material collecting from the sample unit. How many leaves, how many uh, shoots, how many cuttings we can pull in the lab from asymptomatic or asymptomatic or symptomatic plants. Um, uh, the, um, our activities were focalized to develop a standardized uh, validated protocol based on uh, detection of Xylella fastidiosa in composite samples, um, which, uh, uh, are use, uh, useful uh, which is a useful practice when a large number of samples have to be selected to satisfy uh, the sample size requirements. Uh, until 2010, in the EPO protocol, uh, data on composite samples were available only for olive and uh, and um, coffee plants. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the pool uh, was uh, consisted of 10 grams of uh, tissue per sample. So um, uh, more data were uh, necessary. Um, um, for these reasons, we started to work on uh, uh, composite samples um, to optimize a, um, a protocol uh, suitable to detect Xylella fastidiosa in a large volume of plant homogenate um, uh, prior to be tested uh, with the standard procedure. Uh, briefly, we, um, we recovered uh, patches uh, from uh, infected plants of olive and vegetative shoots from infected plants of polygala, uh, oleander, lavander, and uh, xylem tissue uh, was scraped um, from uh, infected cuttings of uh, cherry to obtain a pool of 20 gram per samples. Uh, about the same scheme we use it to obtain a pool of uh, 40 gram per sample of uh, uh, plants of Brassicace and Solanace, uh, which are not host uh, plants of uh, the Apulian strain, the Donno, and uh, the, um, uh, the stem portion of these plants were mixed with the stem portion of infected periwinkles to uh, obtain a pool of 30 gram uh, per samples. Um, after uh, the plants prepared in the previous way were uh, um, incubated, where uh, um, we added uh, PBS and we followed two conditional experimental conditions. We um, uh, homogenized the tissue and uh, we don't, didn't homogenize the tissue, but only we soaked the, the tissue in bags with the, the, the buffer. Uh, we concentrated the, the, uh, the sap uh, with the centrifugation steps to, to obtain um, a final pellet in one milliliter PBS that was um, uh, uh, centrifugated to be resuspended in food lysis buffer. Uh, in food lysis buffer to be processed by the, uh, by the molecular test reported by EPO and by a new kit, the Maxwell uh, Pro Mega kit on the uh, automated platform, uh, followed by QPCR. And uh, in, uh, in one milliliter of PBS, if uh, the samples need to be tested by a LISA or lamp. At least three replicates per test were performed. The results are shown in this table for the hoodie plants. Um, first, inconsistent results were obtained without homogenization steps, only by soaking, um, um, and using only one infected portion. Um, the test performed on polygala leaves repeatedly failed. For these reasons, we used the portion of vegetative shoots. 
um, we uh, QPCR uh, generated the, the um, 100% of diagnostic sensitivity independently to the uh, DNA extraction method used. About LAMP, uh, it generated 100% uh, of diagnostic sensitivity. Uh, however, uh, some replicates of uh, lavender failed in the first run, they resulted negative, but when diluted, they were positive. And uh, uh, also ELISA generated 100% uh, of diagnostic um, sensitivity for all the uh, all speeches except, and the same for LAMP, for CHERRY. Cherry, uh, for Cherry, we have problem because uh, the, uh, the expected positive results uh, gave generated a signal similar to the negative control. So it is recommended to use the qPCR. Uh, and um, in the table, I'll show the, the pool uh, that you can, uh, the, the, the plants that you can sample. For olive, using four leaves, you can sample 200 samples, uh, you, um, you can pull 200 samples, uh, 200 um, plants. And for the other species, about 100 uh, plants. About uh, uh, Brassicace and Solanace, um, uh, the same inconsistent results were obtained without homogenization step. Uh, QPCR generated uh, the, high, uh, diagnostic the highest diagnostic sensitivity independently to the suction by the suction method used. And uh, both LAMP and the LISA test produced the lower values of diagnostic sensitivity, which was uh, drastically low for, for a composite sample of Brassicace. In this case, one stem of infected periwinkle um, was used to, um, uh, to obtain a pool of 40 gram, uh, which correspond to 200 sample plants for uh, uh, Brassicace and Solanace. Um, this is, uh, these are the, the, um, the value of CQ, the CQ values obtained with the three DNA extraction uh, methods followed by QPCR of Harper. Uh, the CQ values uh, were in an optimal range, uh, were higher for lavender CTAB extracts and cherry and uh, extract uh, oct obtained by uh, um, Mericon and Maxwell kit um, uh, um, uh, extracts of cherry. And uh, negative control didn't produce any amplification curve because we used the same type of tissues as negative control processed in the same way. Uh, for ELISA, uh, the OD values were in optimal range, but low for olive and herbaceous sauce, even if uh, uh, they were considered positive in accordance to the uh, guidelines of uh, EPO for ELISA test. Um, also, we uh, the validated a protocol of composite samples based on a small amount of tissues to be processed, uh, to be processed um, using conventional extraction methods reported by EPO protocol. And uh, at least six independent replicates were uh, processed. Uh, for olive, the best, uh, um, the best pool, the best combination was four infected leaves uh, with uh, uh, 20 or 40 leaves, uh, which generated the diagnostic sensitivity of 100% uh, at least one of the selected uh, um, detection method. And uh, it means that eight plants uh, could be pooled uh, for olive. Um, for oleander, poor results were obtained in testing one infected leaves, and uh, we obtain uh, uh, diagnostic sensitivity of 100% using two or three leaves on 16 or 24 leaves, um, uh, with uh, uh, by at last at least one of the, the methods selected, and uh, it means that eight plants uh, could be pooled. However, uh, uh, increasing the number of leaves, inhibitors could affect the assay, man mainly the QPCR. Um, for polygala myrtifolia, uh, uh, the best pulse was uh, um, consisted of six infected leaves on uh, 48 uh, healthy leaves, uh, and we obtained with uh, all the three uh, diagnostic uh, procedures 100% uh, of diagnostic sensitivity. 
uh, and it means uh, to pull that, that um, uh, eight plants of polygala myrtifolia can be pulled, taking uh, uh, six leaves for each plant. For chowry, for the, um, for chowry, we uh, worked on dormant material, so we scraped uh, parts of infected uh, xylem tissue and we mixed it with part of healthy xylem tissue. And uh, um, we obtain 100% uh, of diagnostic sensitivity by qPCR and uh, ELISA. Um, it means that uh, we can pull uh, uh, up to five plants. Um, increasing the amount of xylem tissues, however, inhibitors could inf uh, further affect uh, the lamp assay. Uh, this is a, tab a table that summarizes uh, the minimum number of leaves uh, of the xylem part that um, uh, should be collected and the number of plants that can be pulled, wi uh, which are uh, 10 for olive, 8 for oleander, polygala, and 5 for cherry, and the maximum number of uh, units. Uh, conclusion. Uh, these protocols uh, were sensitive and reliable to correctly detect Salella fastidiosa. Homogenization is a crucial step to successfully detect uh, the bacterium in, uh, in composite samples, especially uh, for the protocol based on large amount of tissue. Um, these uh, results uh, were included in the uh, last version of Epoch Protocol of uh, 2019, recently published in, the, in September, and uh, as a guida uh, guidance for sampling uh, at consignments, place of production or nursery. And uh, the guidelines provide the type of tissue to be processed, the minimum number of plant portion collected from the single unit of the lot, the maximum of units pooled and processed up to 100 or 200 plants according to the different host species, the weight of the lab composite samples and the highest performance test according to the host species. So I finish. Thanks uh, uh, to all the people that supported me in, um, in this work. Uh, thanks uh, for your attention. I finish. Juliana, and thank you for all the exchange we had during the revision of the diagnostic protocol on a more personal note. Any question for Juliana on this section? Um. When you're talking about the, the mixture of the samples, the, the, the leaves, you're talking about the whole leaves? Okay, 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 thank you. Uh, my name is Bobke van der Werf, Wageningen University. Uh, did I understand correctly that you based the whole, well, the sampling approach on the ISPM uh, using the rule that you need to show with 99% confidence that there's not more than 1% infected plants in the batch before it can be exported out of the demarcated area. Is, is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, now I would like to do a thought experiment. Suppose that indeed one in 100 plants, well, let's say one in 1,000 plants is infected and you would export 100,000 plants out of the demarcated area, there would be uh, 100 infected plants. Yes. So is the, is the required level of protection reached? Uh, you, um, uh, a lab can, um, the inspector can take um, a subsamples. Uh, um, then you can follow the indication of ESPM 31, and uh, the laboratory can uh, perform the analysis on subsamples of uh, uh, two, 200 plants for olive, for, for, ex for examples. You can uh, so divide the, the sample sites in subsamples. Yeah, but that's, that's not the question. Oh, the the no. question is, 
if, if you sample a, a fairly large number of plants, yes. say you sample 500 okay. plants, and you say, oh, I find nothing here. So this, this shipment is safe to ship out. But suppose that one in 1,000 in that batch is infected. It's very possible because it's very difficult to detect. Yeah. Is, 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 is that indeed the, the thinking that is underlying the, what is acceptable level of risk for movement of plant material in Europe, considering Silella? I, I just want to verify that ah, I okay. get it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm not the person, uh, the person to <laughs> discuss on this, uh, on, this uh, on the table of SPM 31. Uh, uh, the discussion is, uh, is for other people that decide this type of... Uh, yeah, ac uh, actually, ISPM, ISPM I just, 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 gi just gives you some guidance. It doesn't say 90% yes. yes. confidence that is not more than 1%. It's, yes. it's up to the risk manager, and exactly. Claude, Claude Bragar told us, don't, don't discuss this, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think if, if you start uh, looking at ISPM, uh, ISPM 31, you do m many more um, assumptions, like it's homogeneous, etc. So, I mean, this is a decision, this is a management decision, and then you, you go back to see yeah. what what sampling should be to yeah. reach that level. Okay, okay. And but I my think it's more a management decision than anything. Okay. I, I, I totally understand. But then the management decision has been made, 99% confidence that it's not more than 1%, then it's okay. That's usually what, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be shoot, shoot, shoot at there. Shot. Shot, yeah. Um, um, in, in, in plant health, we have general recommendation in EPO, and usually we say it depends on the type of material, but 99%, 1% is usually 99% confidence level, 1% infection is kind of common. Uh, but I know this is, again, a kind of management decision, so there's nothing surprising in that, in that choice. But... Um, in principle, it, it should vary depending on the pest, uh, and yeah, I, I see a guy over there raising the hand. Pasquale, you may want to add something? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean. I thought you were going to answer. <laughs> no, uh, yes. Uh, yes, Pasquale Diruba from the European Commission, the Plant Health Unit. I, th I think, uh, indeed, uh, uh, it's a pure uh, risk management decision, as uh, it has been uh, correctly pointed out, and I would leave it to, <laughs> to the risk managers to decide which level of um, risk uh, they can accept. Um, but if I may um, uh, ask a question for the yes, presentation. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you um, for the result. I was just uh, wondering uh, the level of infected uh, uh, plants which have been uh, tested, uh, where uh, th there was a high inoculum uh, present in the plant, um, or are, are, were there asymptomatic plants? Before to, oh, yeah. um, to conduct the experiment, we tested preliminary single infected portions for each, uh, each of species. For uh, olive, uh, we, um, uh, we tested severe uh, plants with uh, quick uh, decline uh, symptoms, and uh, we obtained 100% of infected leaves. Uh, all, all the infected leaves that we tested, the single infected leaves, we test the single infected leaves were positive. But also we, test, uh, we tested the plant asymptomatic, and we obtain uh, about uh, 30, 33% of uh, infected leaves, single infected leaves. For these uh, reasons, we discard, um, uh, the, um, uh, we, we, we don't prefer, we don't use the uh, one infected leaf, because if you use one infected leaf, you fail, the, the, you fail, you fail the, the detection of the bacterium in, uh, on, uh, if you use uh, the one infected leaf, because 
33% is the minimum of the percentage of the infected leaves in a plant. The same about for oleander, uh, while for polygala, lavender and cherry uh, that uh, didn't show symptoms, uh, we uh, checked the distribution of the bacterium in the single infected leaves and uh, we uh, obtained that all the portions were infected. Uh, so the bacterium uh, was uh, uh, distributed uh, uniformly in the, uh, in the plants without any symptoms. Um, probably the, in the early stage of uh, the infection. We use naturally infected uh, uh, plants. I would like to stress one point, and in the meantime, if the speakers of this afternoon could come on the stage and take their seat. Um, I think it's, it's really important to see in projects that this issue of sampling is tackled, because this is often, um, I mean, working in diagnostic for a good portion of my time, this is really often the tricky part. So how much should you sample? What should you sample? Well, what usually we have a, an idea, but how much should we sample? And for me, this is really one of the first time I see something really detailed with experiments and studies done on, on sampling. And for me, I was really thrilled when I saw um, that work coming because this was really giving us more, as, as Juliana showed, we had very little in the first version, in the 2018 version of the protocol, and in 2019, we were able to give more guidance. Uh, and, and it's not that often that we have this possibility uh, for diagnostic protocol, and those who are involved in the drafting of diagnostic protocol, they know that very well. So now this is the open session for questions, so yes, please. Yes, uh, my name is Emilio Montesinos from the University of Girona. I'm a plant pathologist and I have experience in other bacteria uh, in Shailella only a few years. But uh, one important question for detection is uh, which is the minimum level you can detect with the method, the best method, in terms of, uh, in the case of Shailella, cells per gram of plant material. to everybody, I don't know yeah. who can <laughs> answer, but that's the question as an epidemiologist. This is they have no microphone. Yeah. Okay. Um, within the um, evaluation of the different um, methods, and through the different interlaboratory uh, comparison, generally we got a um, level of detection. The best one with real-time PCR for upper, as I said, I explained uh, a few uh, minutes ago. It's the, the, the best method in real-time PCR, and we got around 10, 10 to 2. Uh, cells or bacteria per milliliter of extract of plants mm. that can be surely detected but depends on the host plant or the matrices, depends of um, the, the state of the plant and uh, for example the colleagues from Spain have shown always or also that there is an effect of the variety of, uh, for example, olive trees or almond that uh, give different results with the same method. And then we, we are able to detect a little bit uh, less uh, with um, a lower threshold with other methods. If maybe some can you add something or more? No, we, we have the same experience of French collect. It depends on the host, on the 
host uh, the matrices. However, the qPCR uh, of ARPER is uh, the most uh, sensitive uh, about the same uh, the same uh, quant uh, the same amount that uh, François Poliakov said, uh, ten to two uh, CFU uh, per milliliters. Okay, just based on our experience in qPCR in citrus, uh, you are using different probes, um, but uh, it's almost 1,000 cells by gramma tissue. Not, not 100, but 1,000. The detection limit that you can uh, sure that is not an artificial uh, response of the methodology but it's a real infection, it's almost 1,000. Okay, thank you. This, okay. this is what uh, is normally with other plant pathogenic bacteria. So my question is addressed to one fact, is that uh, is anybody knowing what is the minimum infection dose for Shailella? So because if the minimum infection dose is lower than 1,000 cells, uh, there are many samples that escape from detection. So uh, I, I would like to add my thinking to the one from the colleague from Wageningen <laughs> about the 1% uh, 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 error in uh, detection. So uh, I think uh, uh, even with the best method of detection, we still have a risk. And this is the reason for what we put non-detected, because usually growers, even nurseries, thought not not detected, no Shailella in the sample. So this is wrong. We, we, have, we have to really uh, uh, tell them that we have uh, uh, not uh, uh, at detection level that permit to say no presence of Shalella. Thank, thank you very much. Nando Petra is my name. I work for the European Commission, uh, DG Sante and uh, Audit Department. Uh, and uh, uh, I am uh, auditing uh, the uh, methods uh, and measures uh, implemented by uh, the member states. And uh, for me, uh, from the risk management point of view, uh, related uh, to uh, my uh, to the question of the previous uh, uh, colleague, uh, the uh, risk of having uh, false negative results, and of course, uh, for me, there are at least three factors uh, which uh, could influence uh, the uh, uh, efficiency uh, of uh, the tests. Uh, one is the detection level. The second is uh, the uh, extraction, the DNA extraction. And the third is how to deal with the PCR inhibitors. Uh, and uh, concerning the first, uh, I think, uh, the uh, uh, level uh, of uh, uh, bacterium uh, presence in the sample, did you uh, do any experience and, uh, during uh, the vegetation period? How uh, does uh, the uh, level of bacterium uh, change in the samples, number one. Number two, uh, you mentioned that the quit up uh, extraction kit is the best. Uh, uh, do you think uh, that uh, the other tests, other uh, uh, kits uh, are in the which are in the protocol provide the same result? Or uh, what are uh, the methods uh, you use for, uh, let's say, uh, compensating uh, the qPCR uh, or the PCR inhibitors. And uh, in, uh, let's say, in the general term, uh, do you think, would it be necessary to develop species-related test methods for Silella? Thank you. So to detect Gilela, we actually did quite a lot, but it may be not enough. We use the CTAB homemade method that Francoise was talking about. 
that's actually the best one we had for DNA extraction, but we still extract inhibitors for plants in it. Um, when we set up qPCR or PCR, we also use specific mix that are supposed to limit inhibition of compounds in the PCR, but yeah, we still need to deal with it. And if, if I can add something about the differences between the species, if you look at the validation data that is available for the different tests, you will see that it varies according to the matrix. So I'm afraid the answer is there is no one test that would catch everything. You have some tests for which some extraction are better than others. That's what I've learned with them. This is not my own knowledge. It's just a kind of I'm trying to digest. And so, I mean, I'm afraid that for a, um, a disease like Zilella, it's very complicated to have a the test that will do everything. And this goes against harmonization, and I'm a big fan of harmonization, but so one test, one line? No, this is not possible. And, and also there is, um, I mean, I don't want to open a Pandora box. I may open it still. Um, all this question about the level, it's about what you're trying to discuss and what we're all trying to discuss in diagnostic is it, what is the biological relevance of what I am detecting? And this is a big question, but I haven't seen even the start of an answer there. And not only for Xylella, but for many, many different organisms. So this is really a big question, but this is epidemiology work, and this is not the easiest to do. But we need that type of work. We know in diagnostic, for example, for seeds, as soon as we're touching seed diagnostic, this is really a key issue because we're going to more and more sensitive detection methods. And so these questions, the biological uh, signification of what we are detecting. And that's, uh, that's a team for research. Yes, there is another point which is important maybe to, for the first negative is the sampling, mm. because we may have the, the best method we have, uh, very high sensitive, if we have not the good sample to detect, to work on, we will not to be able to detect the bacteria. Mm. The, the lab people always say, crap in, crap out. You have a detection level in a test, so if you're below the detection, and, you, and a confidence level. So a, a re the result of a test is we didn't find it in that sample at that level of confidence with that level of detection. So, so that's all what we can say, or they can say. We can also add that in samples, bacteria are known to be in biofilm, and one way also to improve the detection is to disrupt the biofilm in order to have a better access to the DNA. And using sonication was um, demonstrated in the literature to improve the efficiency of cultivating various bacteria, and xylella was one of them. And we demonstrated that using sonication before DNA extraction improved a lot the, ex the efficiency of the extraction. So there are several methods like that that can uh, improve the detection, but I agree with you when you have a negative result, it's not that the bacterium is absent from the sample, it's just that you don't know, it's yes. always the same. You're yeah. not able to detect it. Yeah. Uh, Francois. Uh, Francois. Yes. Juliana. I, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely disorientated. Uh, to answer to the minimum level of the bacterium, the qPCR have a, a threshold uh, detection limit that could be um, 
overcome to the, with the next generation sequence that uh, are, uh, have a high sensitivity uh, until um, at the level of reads of the genome bacterium. But uh, the, the application next generation sequencing for a monitoring program, I think, yeah. Uh, it is difficult, but uh, next generation sequencing can detect a minimal level of the bacterium mm -hmm. in yeah. a plant. But that's for, yeah, that's yeah. Next, generation. next generation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Francois, I only can comment uh, our experience in Alicante with many uh, environmental samples uh, that I recommended to test in, in spring and autumn. Yeah. And the problem we uh, using the same methodology of extracting NEA and the same PCR uh, samples taken in uh, late May and June were negative if you analyze from pictures from the leaves, mm. not analyzing from the wood uh, tissue. Mm. Um, it's, uh, I think we have to adjust the timing of sampling for each uh, kind of species and the, the right moment to sampling. Mm. The inconvenient of that is uh, we only have very, very small time, uh, very little time put to sampling in, in summer to perform all the samples we need to test. Mm -hmm. so it's my there, there was a similar experience in Italy, depending on the period. Yeah. I, I have one question, uh, which is, um, so the real-time PCR, for, for the moment in our diagnostic protocol, so I'm just like looking at the future um, for the for the subspecies identification we mainly rely on MLST so my question is should we just throw away our MLST protocol and replace it by the real-time PCR that have been presented today I'm going to be killed by my editor back home because it's every time 60 page of a diagnostic protocol to go through publication but uh, um, I think the MLST obviously still has a place because you want to identify the sequence type. Um, I think it's just, particularly for us, without having Xylella in the UK, if we were to get a finding, um, any, anything which will speed up um, get, obtaining more information about that positive is a bonus for us. So if we can have a more rapid method in the meantime before we can carry out the MLST method, um, that would be preferable to us. But yeah, obviously, if we could include the subspecies assays in the um, EPO diagnostic protocol, that would be great as well, just as an additional. I'm looking at blonde. I think for regulatory purposes, the answer would be which subspecies is it? And this is the objective of our protocol at the moment. So we give information on STs, but the main aim is the subspecies. So it I was just wondering. It depends on what you want to do, because in France, to set up plant management, we just need the subspecies. So I think UPCR could be enough. But of course, if you want to do epidemiology or have a second test to confirm your analysis, you need to keep an MLST. Okay. It depends on the question. Okay. So are there any other? Yes. <laughs> One more question. Uh, hi, I'm Cynthia van Maldrigem from Ilvo in Belgium. Uh, we are always talking about false negative results, but I'm actually wondering about false positive results. Uh, we don't have Xylella in Belgium. Yeah. And um, I am doing some research on, on plants uh, to, to see if we have a risk. 
and um, I'm struggling with CT values with uh, 33, 34, 35. I'm wondering if people here also have that problem and if they maybe give me a clue <laughs> uh, where it comes from. Uh, it's, it's with Harper, it's with uh, Wang uh, QPCR. So yeah, I was wondering that. <laughs> In our lab, we a lot of time have high CT value above 35. And we think it's because we have a low infection levels and also because you have inhibitors in plant. It's, yeah. So if we have a CT value and if our curve are exponential, we conclude we have the LLA. Um, yes, it, it is uh, questionable because when we uh, implemented the, the process of validation, we um, make a lot of repetition of the test and we can see that sometimes we have one uh, extraction and one um, um, assay is positive and the three others are negative. That means that we are at the limit of the repeatability of the method. So we, we cannot say it's positive or it's negative because there is an impact behind. We can say it's our position uh, in uh, our lab is to say there is a suspicion. We must have a look very uh, um, precisely on the plants to take other sample and to verify is, is it a real positive or is it an artifact? Okay, just, okay. <laughs> again, some, uh, close the session, so. No, some, uh, again, some uh, experience that you have is about the city values. Uh, we're doing PCR, uh, we have the IPCR for a lot of samples uh, uh, using um, nursery plants, okay? And uh, sometimes you have PCR from uh, 35, to 34 to 36, or 33 to 36, and you do again the reactions and no more, okay? So in my point of view, uh, for a quarantine process, Maybe a deep sequence could be in the one sample, okay? But uh, for for the make in my case the, that you're using for uh, a cert a certifi certified nursery program, if you do on uh, reactions and no more CT values, I mean negative sample. Okay. Does it? Okay, I was just wondering where it comes from. I mean, uh, I thought also maybe other. Um, bacteria or even other, uh, yeah, or plants related uh, or components or whatever, but uh, yeah. I also tried to test uh, several times, but uh, yeah, I think it's just very uh, frustrating to, to have those kind of. Uh, yes, it's, 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 work not, this yeah. it's not the first time this is flagged. So uh, if I remember clearly, we had something, a comment on that even in our diagnostic protocol, if I'm not mistaken, Balvi. I think we have a comment on this high CT values because we know this is happening. I would like to thank all the speakers for uh, this afternoon session to have uh, kept on time and uh, let everybody have a coffee before we start again at half past four. So thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you.